The International Network of Algerian Scientists, INAS, is a nonprofit organization founded in 2016 by Algerian academics and professionals residing in the USA. The motivation is to pay back the homeland and help elevate the level of education in Algeria. INAS's mission is to network Algerian competencies worldwide with counterparts in Algeria. Among its activities, INAS has organized a significant conference that took place outside of Washington, D.C., USA in 2019. The conferees identified several need areas in Algeria and agreed to work on 10 different projects covering areas ranging from education, healthcare, to agriculture, and ecotourism, to name a few. The work is ongoing and progressing. INES is adopting the most contemporary and proven scientific methods to address these issues. INES's humble beginnings included a few members. Today, it accounts for hundreds of able Algerians from the world over. Their goal is to participate in the rebuilding process of our new Algeria. These able and proud Algerians combine diversity and expertise with benevolence to set a path for a bright future in Algeria. INES uses a top technology platform to allow members to collaborate and exchange knowledge. As an organization, INES has different departments that ensure professional support to all its members, projects, and events. We welcome all Algerian competencies worldwide to join us in our noble mission. Algeria is bigger than all of us. Let's stand up and be counted today. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us in another uh, monthly webinar for the project Earthquake Hazard Mitigation. I am Mohamed Amrouch. Uh, I am the project leader for this uh, Earthquake Hazard Mitigation Project with the Association INAS. And this month, we are very honored and pleased to have our 14th webinar. So this month, we are going to have uh, Dr. Paolo Del uh, Aversana. Good morning, Dr. Paolo, and thank you very much for accepting our request. Good morning. So uh, in this month, Dr. Paolo is going to uh, share with us a very interesting technique, probably less known by the general public. It's called the sonification of seismic data. And we'll introduce how we are going to apply, how, how can we apply music technology for geophysical exploration. So before uh, we start, I would like to briefly introduce uh, Dr. Paolo uh, Del uh, Aversana. So Dr. Paolo graduated in geological science in 1988 and in physics in 1996. He has more than three decades of experience in various area of the Earth disciplines, including geology, volcanology, and exploration, exploration geophysics. He currently works in any SPA as a senior geophysicist and major and project manager for the development of innovative geophysical technologies and machine learning methods. He is the author of various patents and published over 100 specialist articles and several books. He has received international awards, including the prestigious ENI Award from the President of the uh, Italian Republic as a recognition for innovation. And this month, he is honoring us with this uh, public lecture. Uh, Dr. Paolo, please, uh, the, mic is, the floor is yours. You can start the presentation. Thank you very much, Mohammed, for your introduction. And uh, thank you, everybody, for attending this webinar about sonification of seismic data. Uh, I will explain how we can apply uh, sound engineering and music technology for geophysical data analysis and interpretation. So this is the outline of my talk. I will introduce uh, the methodology smoothly, uh, starting from uh, very general concepts. And then I will go uh, through the, the main details step by step slide after slide, explain the mathematics and the physics of this approach. But probably the best way to explain the approach is using uh, examples. So I will show several examples based on uh, real data. And uh, in the final part of the talk, I will show how we can use machine learning and uh, deep learning for improving this hybrid technology based on uh, sound engineering and geophysics. Finally, we'll uh, give you a summary and the main remarks. So let me ex explain, first of all, the motivations of this technology. I think that uh, uh, dual sense analysis uh, of uh, seismic and uh, more in general uh, geophysical data can be uh, very useful for enhancing interpretation of geophysical data. So instead of just looking at seismic sections or uh, geophysical data, we can try to listen to these uh, 
uh, geophysical data. Combining uh, visual and audio uh, tools for analyzing and interpreting our data. Uh, so for these reasons, we introduced the new, new types of uh, musical attributes uh, complementary to the standard seismic and geophysical attributes for a quantitative analysis of this data. And we will see how these uh, new attributes can uh, speed up uh, the mining and the processing uh, and uh, the analysis of uh, large data sets uh, converted into light musical formats. Light, I mean, uh, uh, the, this type of format does not uh, require large amount of computer memory. And I will use in particular the MIDI musical format that is a standard in the sound engineering. MIDI means musical instrument digital interface. And I will show how we can apply um, very efficiently uh, machine learning and deep learning techniques to this segue to MIDI converted data for speed up, uh, speeding up the process of uh, clustering and classification of the geophysical data. So let me start by introducing the methodology very smoothly. Um, the first very important part of our workflow is to convert Segway data, if we are dealing with the seismic data, but also we can use different formats, uh, into musical instrument digital interface format. This is a standard format in digital music. And uh, after doing that, we can extract features from these MIDI files that are absolutely complementary uh, to the standard uh, uh, geophysical attributes in order to improve uh, data analysis and classification through machine learning and deep learning approaches. But we need to explain what is a MIDI feature. So uh, this is an example of uh, um, a part of a seismic trace transformed into uh, a MIDI file. So uh, on the horizontal axis, we have the travel time it is about one second, more or less. And uh, on the vertical axis, we have a, a virtual keyboard. You can see a virtual keyboard. Uh, so here we have the pitch that is related with the frequency of the original signal. Whereas in colors, we have, we have um, uh, the sound uh, uh, extracted from the original seismic trace. In terms of loudness, in red, we mean how sound intensity in blue we have low sound intensity so every small square that you can see here in this display is a musical midi note that was extracted from the original seismic signal so we can play and we can listen to this seismic signal and i will show you several examples of that uh, in a few minutes so a MIDI feature is just an attribute that is extracted from this type of, uh, of MIDI file. Examples are the pitch, first of all, that is related with instantaneous frequency, the so-called MIDI velocity that is related to the signal amplitude, and patterns and ensembles of MIDI notes that form melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic trends. And all these trends are very useful. You will see in a few slides that these trends are very useful for classifying with deep learning uh, our data. And we can extract pitch histograms and statistics uh, and other, uh, many other attributes. More than 100 musical attributes can be extracted from this type of file. Uh, let's go more in detail. Um, this is a seismic trace on the top panel. So uh, it is in horizontal, but it is exactly a, a common seismic trace. And in this case, this seismic trace was calibrated by a well that was drilled very close to 
uh, the location of these seismic trees. And this well crossed a low saturation, gas saturation reservoir, but also a high gas saturation reservoir marked by these dashed lines. And in the lower panel, you have the same MIDI representation of these seismic trees. And uh, this is just a musical representation of these seismic trees because this MIDI file can be played using a typical uh, musical software that is called a sequencer that is able to interpret and to play MIDI files. So you, we, we can listen to these seismic trees and we can listen to the different types of sounds associated with low saturation and high saturation. And at the same time, we can extract many, many media attributes from these trees, and we can use these attributes for automatic classification. There are many benefits in applying this type of techniques because uh, uh, the first very important benefit is that this MIDI file require very low computer memory. It is less than one kilobyte for each trace. Uh, and uh, so we can um, create uh, um, a big data set of MIDI transformed seismic traces, and we can process this database very quickly and very efficiently using um, our, our type of software. And we can do uh, big data mining, pattern recognition, data clustering, automatic classification, very, very efficiently using these MIDI files. And uh, uh, the other benefit, of course, is, is that you can, looking, you can look at the trace, but at the same time, you can also listen to the trace. So a dual sense perception of the same data. Um, Yes, I have said that, and uh, the applications are many. We have many types of application, so we can classify uh, seismic data, earthquakes, uh, volcanic tremor, uh, but we can apply also this technique to different types of, uh, of data, to every type of time series, including, for instance, medical uh, signals for analysis of electrocardiograms for instance. Let, let me go more in detail. How do we, we move from SegWi to MIDI? This is a very important reference paper published in uh, Geophysical Prospecting, where you can find all the technical and mathematical details of our technique. Uh, but let's see just the key points. OK, this is our a single trace. And we, the first step is to perform a frequency analysis of the seismic trace. We can use many types of mathematical transforms, such as uh, Stockwell transform, or Wavelet, or Fast Fourier transform. Probably the best one is the Stockwell transform in our experience. And doing this, after doing this analysis, we get the spectrogram. So this is the spectrogram of this uh, trace. So on the vertical axis here, we have the frequency, on the horizontal axis, we have the, uh, the travel times. In colors, we have the amplitude. And uh, from this spectrogram, we, okay, this is the same uh, trace with its spectrum, but in 3D, exactly the same. And from this spectrum, we extract the MIDI file. There is a, mathem a non-linear mathematical relationship between the frequency and the MIDI note number. That is this one. N in this formula, N indicates the sequential number of the MIDI notes. For instance, for N equal one, we have the C0 note corresponding to 16.35 Hertz and so forth. So there is a nonlinear relationship between the spectrogram and the MIDI file. So this is the MIDI file corresponding to this spectrum, corresponding to this seismic trace. So from the seismic trace, we were able to get this MIDI file where every small point in this uh, virtual piano representation represent a musical MIDI notes. There are thousands, many thousands of MIDI notes. So it is a very, very uh, realistic conversion from 
seismic data to spectrogram to uh, MIDI file. We don't lose any information in this conversion. And at the same time, we get a very light format in MIDI. And uh, the good news, let me go back. The good, the good news is that we can play this um, MIDI, the, uh, MIDI file using any type of musical instrument that we like, because we have big libraries of digital sounds, including piano, violin, guitar, every type of instruments. And we can play these uh, by selecting our preferred instruments that maybe can be able to highlight specific parts of the signal using the um, rate, the reproduction rate that we like. So we can reproduce the sound of this seismic trace very, very slowly, if we like, listening it almost note by note, short by short, for capturing every minimal variations in terms of information content of this signal. So we, after doing that, we import all these seismic files transformed into MIDI into a digital musical domain. So this is a, just a virtual mixer where we have many, many seismic traces transformed into MIDI. Virtually, we can have an infinite number of seismic traces in this, in this uh, uh, software. And we can mix them, we can stack them, we can process them very easily. So this is the, the other very important part of the workflow after the segue to MIDI transformation, we import everything in our musical domain. And this is another representation of the same, same seismic trace. In this case, below in, in, the pan, in the bottom panel, we have the pitch histogram, where the colors represent the different musical notes. And uh, uh, you can appreciate the uh, type of information that this type of representation brings with itself. So every note is shown, uh, it is a sort of a spectral decomposition of the seismic trace. But here we can appreciate also some rhythmic properties of the data that are different in the low saturation part of the signal with respect to the high saturation part. So you can start understanding the importance of this representation because it highlights the intrinsic, rhythmic, melodic, harmonic content of our original signal. It is really a musical signal, including musical properties such as harmonic, melodic, and rhythmic properties. And we can filter it very easily. Uh, if in this case, we perform the low pass filter of our trace just for, for highlighting in terms of musical notes, the high saturation part of the signal. And this can be done basically instantaneously. Uh, let, let me go through some examples so that you can listen to, to our um, geophysical signals. So I will show you, uh, you will listen, will listen to, uh, uh, first of all, uh, and um, a seismogram from an earthquake, but also you will listen to the sound of the faults or the sounds of uh, uh, volcanic eruptions, uh, eruption transformed into real music. Of course, they are not nice music in the traditional sense because they uh, are not very harmonic. But what is important is not to create beautiful music, but to create significant music from a geophysical point of view. So let's start with a, an earthquake uh, that I played uh, automatically after conversion with a, a standard piano. So what, what, we, what we have here, basically here we have the seismogram uh, here on the bottom panel, uh, whereas uh, on the 
upper left panel, we have the face scope for looking at uh, the sound of this earthquake played with the piano on the two left and right ch channels. And here we have again the waveform scope looking at the two different channels uh, uh, of the earthquake. And here on the right uh, top panel, we have the spectrometer where we can, can listen and can see the frequency content of the uh, earthquake itself uh, for the both for both channels so this is just a first very simple example of how we can create a sonification of uh, an earthquake seismogram so that we can at the same time looking at the visual properties and the spectral properties of the original signal but we can al also listen to it this was just a first example. Now, looking, let, let's look at uh, a seismic trace, uh, a single seismic trace. So here on the left panel, you, you can see a seismic trace that was extracted from a seismic section in background. Uh, on the side, I put uh, the filtered MIDI file extracted from the seismic trace. This is the same seismic trace, but represented in a different format, wave format, uh, for highlighting better the discontinuities of the, the trace. Here on the side, we have the spectrum. So we have many information visually represented at the same time, but we can also listen to this seismic trace. This seismic trace crosses about four kilometers of Earth and is reflected uh, upwards and uh, transformed into sounds. And here we have also a sort of sketch model, geological model of the, of the seismic trace. Uh, and I played this seismic trace again with, with a piano. So here we are going to listen to a sort of uh, uh, musical travel of uh, our seismic uh, wave. So we are, Basically, we are surfing on, on a seismic musical wave crossing the heart stratifications. Let's go in to listen to it. Of course, the music is not beautiful uh, from a traditional sense. Uh, in the, let's say, in the traditional musical sense, this music is, is not very nice, but it is very significant in the sense that it contains a lot of musical attributes that I will show you later, uh, can be extracted and can populate uh, a very complex matrix as an input for machine learning, as we are going to see in a uh, few minutes. Let's go to listen now a complete seismic section. So after listening single seismic traces, we can apply the same technique for um, transforming into music a complete seismic section. In this case, we have a, a very long seismic section, 117 kilo, 75 kilometers, crossing uh, an important uh, discovery, gas and oil discovery, this Kruger discovery. And, um, what you are going to listen to now. Here, I, I selected a, a specific depth marked by this dashed line here. And you will see a, a yellow symbol, a yellow circle moving from left to right. And uh, in, corresponding, in correspondence of each position of this symbol, you will listen to the music associated with this seismic data at this depth. And this is the spectrogram 
so this is a, on, on the second panel, you have a sort of horizontal seismic trace that is given by the envelope of all the amplitude at this depth, trace by trace. And this is the spectrogram extracted from this horizontal seismic trace. And in the lower panel, you have the, the MIDI file where I, I, I assigned a, a MIDI piano for uh, creating a music, a music with this related with this position along the seismic section. Uh, please pay attention to every variation, lateral variation, when this circle moves from left to right. For instance, here on the ear, and especially here when we go inside the uh, oil reservoir, you will listen to a specific music, a specific sound that is a marker for oil, at least in this specific case very well calibrated by wells. And also you will listen to a complete change of music when we exit from the reservoir. So this music is not be beautiful, but very, very significant from a geophysical point of view. So let's, let's listen to it now step by step. I hope that your your computer, the sound and the image was properly synchronized because in, in such a way you can really listen to the variations. Let's start again from this point here and let's see what happens when we go inside the gas and oil reservoir. So basically, what is the message of this slide? The message is that we can have a um, multimodal representation of the same seismic data. It is the traditional representation in terms of a seismic section, but it is also a representation in terms of frequency uh, spectrogram of, of it. For each depth, we can do the same. And we have also a MIDI representation of the same signal and an audio. Uh, representation of the same signal. So it is a multimodal representation of the same data at the same time. And uh, um, this, of course, will improve the possibility to un understand and to interpret our data. Uh, let's go on. This is uh, using the same technique, I extracted also some faults from a, a seismic section. And here I would like to uh, show you this multimodal representation of a false. Uh, you can uh, see what happens when the, the mouse go, goes through the false. What, what happens in terms of audio response uh, of uh, these false. Oh. 
So basically, this is the spectrogram uh, associated with the position of the mouse in correspondence of the fourth in our section. And here we can see also the uh, analytic content in terms of frequency spectrum uh, of our, our signal. And at the same time, we can listen to the faults. So this is probably the first time that you can listen to the faults. And uh, this technology is very useful uh, and very complementary to traditional interpretation methods because here you can see, you can listen to every small lateral variation in terms of faults or uh, geological uh, variations um, with an extreme detail. And we can also appreciate the frequency content and the physical properties of these lateral variations. So this, you can understand that this is an incremental tool for interpreting our data. And finally, I would like to show you that we can apply the same technique also for transforming into music, again, a very strange but significant music, an eruption, a volcanic eruption. So listen to this volcanic eruption transformed into music with the same technique. And you can uh, see and explore by yourself many, many of these type of uh, uh, audio video clips on, on, on my YouTube channel. Um, so uh, you can explore by yourself uh, going just to uh, my channel, just um, by digiting Paolo della Versana YouTube. Uh, okay. Uh, now we move uh, to the um, final part of, uh, of the talk because uh, now I, I want to show you how we can use uh, machine learning and deep learning for improving this hybrid technology. Because until now I have, I have shown you that you can listen to the, to the seismic data, to the volcanological data and so on, and improving your, uh, let's say, human capabilities of interpretation of the original data. But we can support our human uh, interpretation using computers and machine learning and neural networks because we can extract the MIDI features from each individual signal. For instance, again, this is, this is the previous slide, the previous seismic trace where I highlighted the different rhythmic and melodic and harmonic properties in the different parts, low saturation and high saturation gas sand. So this is just uh, a, a, an important message showing you that the media attributes are very, very diagnostic and indicative of the properties, of the physical properties of our data. And we can use these media attributes for classifying and analyzing and interpreting our data with the help, with the support of machine learning. For example, this is a seismic section where we have four different channels uh, indicated by A, B, C, and D letters. Uh, these are gas-filled channels. And uh, um, we applied our technology here for extracting MIDI uh, attributes from this. For example, these are four seismic traces transformed into MIDI uh, with the colors representing the different pitches. So in, in the vertical axis, we have about 100 meters in thickness. And these four seismic traces 
cover a lateral distance of about 50 meters. And these are two of the four channels, T and D. And you can see that they show completely different properties in terms of uh, pitch distribution and rhythmic properties and melodic and harmonic properties. So MIDI features are very, very diagnostic for uh, classifying th th these channels. Again, this is another type of representation, a, another uh, channel and uh, two channels, sorry. And using this, this is another representation, again, using the MIDI attributes and uh, uh, just to show you the uh, diagnostic power of these media attributes, this is a statistical um, probability density distribution of some of these attributes um, showing how you can separate the different uh, rock properties and different uh, formation or the different gas uh, content in our uh, rocks. For instance, here, green means clay, uh, blue means high gas saturation, and low means low gas saturations. And here we are plotting this specific uh, media attribute that is called the most common pitch uh, that we uh, de detected in the seismic traces, in, in um, a group of seismic traces. So you can appreciate how, from a statistical point of view, this attribute, just this single attribute is able to distinguish between the different types of scenarios. And this is just one media attribute. Another media attribute is, for instance, variations of sound dynamics. Again, the density probability distribution is very different for low gas saturation sands and high gas saturation sands and clays. So again, using this attribute variations of sound dynamics, we can distinguish uh, between the different types of scenarios. This is another attribute, average note durations. So we have many of these musical attributes, more than 100 of these musical attributes. This is another one. This is called rhythmic music variability. So here you can see that using the rhythmic properties of the original signal, we can distinguish between clay, high gas saturation sand, and low gas saturation sand. And if we uh, give all this information to a machine learning algorithm, such as a deep neural network, for instance, we can really use this many media attributes for classifying our channels automatically, just in few seconds. In few seconds, you can classify uh, the channels based on their uh, media attribute content of the seismic data. So this was the basic uh, message. Let me uh, summarize uh, the, the, the basic messages that I gave you in this uh, uh, slides. So basically, we uh, transform seismic or geophysical signal uh, into music. How do we do that? First, we extract spectrograms from the seismic, from geophysical signal using many types of mathematical transforms, including a Stockwell transform or uh, uh, wavelet transforms, and so on. From that, from that spectrogram, we extract uh, MIDI um, features, including also other audio features that I didn't specify in this presentation. But basically, we can extract MIDI and audio, audio feature for a number that is greater than 100. So we have more than 100 new types of features that can be absolutely complementary to the standard seismic features for classifying this data. Uh, and they are new because uh, in, my, in my knowledge, there isn't any uh, current uh, seismic attribute that is able to characterize the melodic uh, properties of the seismic traces or the harmonic properties or the rhythmic properties of the seismic signals. After doing that, 
we import everything in the sound engineering virtual studio where we can process our uh, MIDI and audio files using the very impressive technology that is available on the market in terms of sound engineering technology. We can filter, we can perform spectral decomposition, we can stack the data and so forth. After doing that, we have many, many processed media and audio attributes that can be used for feeding up a deep learning uh, network or many other machine learning algorithms and for interpreting automatically this data. And the output will be automatic clustering, automatic classification, automatic prediction of uh, geophysical data and so forth. And uh, we can apply this to many types of data. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, we have just a, a summary sketch showing the application to an earthquake. But the, the same technique can be applied to every type of time series, including medical data. Uh, for instance, I apply this technique also for analyzing financial, uh, financial data or uh, um, other types of data and uh, uh, for doing uh, machine learning predictions of time series. And after doing that, we can use deep neural networks for doing data mining, for predictive or descriptive scopes and so forth. So in conclusion, we developed this technology and we applied it uh, with very encouraging results um, with the support of machine learning to real seismic data, but also to, for instance, composite well logs uh, converted into MIDI format. And we, we analyzed the real data sets. Um, the benefits are, we have many benefits but because MIDI, MIDI features uh, have no equivalent seismic attributes and they are very light in terms of memory, computer memory, and they help significantly the process of automatic classification of big data sets. And the approach is fast and accurate at the same time and can be applied to big data. This is very, very, uh, very good news. We can process big data uh, in a very accurate and automatic way. And uh, here we have uh, several references. So you can find a lot of material, um, public uh, domain material, where you can uh, explore uh, applications, theoretical details, and uh, mathematical aspects of our method. Um, and so on. So I hope that this presentation was pretty clear and useful for you. Uh, ah, you can also go on YouTube and find a lot of material on my YouTube channels. And uh, I really thank you for your attention and I open for questions and comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Paolo, for the uh, very insightful presentation uh, you delivered today. Uh, I think you covered the basics from the very beginning and you showed the very interesting and, and uh, uh, interesting examples on how the sonification of seismic data can be used rather for the oil and gas exploration or for, for, for earthquake engineering purposes. So it's, as you said, it's a multidisciplinary technique that is, I personally believe is very, very promising, especially with the development of machine learning that can help the, you know, very advanced classifications of the data. So uh, for our audience, I remind you that uh, you can post, now we can start the Q&A sessions. Dr. Paolo uh, will answer yeah. some of your questions. We can, yes. uh, I will remind you that you can ask the questions in your comment section, uh, just type your question and then we will pick some questions. Actually, we do have a few questions here uh, in the chat. Let me just pick some questions to start with. Yes. Um, we have a question from Ahmed. He said, thank you very much for the very interesting topic. Can this new method of seeing or hearing the data can be used as a direct hydrocarbon indicator, uh, conventional 3D seismic data? or can it be used for denoising purposes? It seems that he's wondering if this data can be used as, because you showed the seismic data uh, yeah. hearing it. So it, can it be used as a DHI, direct hydrocarbon indicator or for uh, filtering out some noise from the seismic data? Uh, 
Yes, the answer is yes. And this answer, this positive answer is based on uh, uh, real experiments. So it is not only theoretical, but it is based on real experiments. For instance, let me uh, go to this. Uh, Okay, among these papers, you can find several examples uh, on my research uh, gate, uh, gate page uh, where we really applied uh, this for uh, direct hydrocarbon indication. Of course, you can uh, do that if you have some calibration. Uh, so the, the, the first very important thing is to create a training data set uh, um, in correspondence possibly of a well. Uh, and if you have uh, uh, seismic data well properly calibrated by logs, for instance, you can create a training data set in correspondence of hydrocarbons and extract media attributes um, in correspondence of the hydrocarbons in order to teach uh, an automatic system of machine learning system using a proper training data set. So the very important requirement is to have some calibration point. And if you have that, uh, and if you, you can create a good training data set, you can use this methodology as a direct hydrocarbon indication. Uh, the second question was for denoising the data. Yes, we can apply it because uh, basically we can use uh, many, many different types of algorithms that are already available in sound engineering. Currently, they are already, already available for denoising musical data. They are extremely effective. And so we can apply the same algorithms without inventing anything. We have just to apply the same algorithms already available in sound engineering technology for denoising our seismic data after transforming them into music. So the answer is double, double yes. Thank you very much. I think it's very promising if we can use uh, this as a DHI. You know, I think you mentioned that the, the music may not be very, very melodic and very beautiful, but if it helps yeah. us to find oil, believe me, it will be very beautiful <laughs> music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, indeed, you have seen that uh, when we go through the, when we went through the Skrugard sec seismic section, yeah. the yeah. sound of oil was uh, very, very peculiar, very particular. It was very different from the remaining part of the section. If you go to YouTube and you listen again to this uh, seismic section, you can listen to the oil part of it that is very different in terms of sounds with respect to the background. So also intuitively, you can understand that uh, in principle, if you have a proper calibration, you can get uh, this type of results. Thank you very much. Actually, I highly recommend uh, all the, the, the audience to check the ResearchGate page of Dr. Paolo as well as his YouTube channels to learn more and have a better visualization of the example. So I have another question offline here uh, yeah. saying, uh, how can the choice of the instrument playing the MIDI file influence on the data? And can we use some classification using different musical instruments? For example, can we combine some, some violin sound with, with some piano sound, with some synthetic sound to have more attributes and probably do some classification with different instruments? Yeah, very, very nice question. Of, of course, yes, it is exactly what I do uh, because different uh, instruments can highlight different portions, different parts of the signal. For instance, a violin can highlight much better uh, the high frequency content. Instead, uh, a low frequency instrument like uh, the left uh, side of a, a piano keyboard or a bass can highlight the lower part of the frequency content of the signal. By mixing them, and we can do that extreme, in a very extremely simple way using a, a sequencer, a musical sequencer, you can create a sort of uh, or orchestra sort of a symphony, a musical symphony made with many instruments that contributes each one with its own contribution to play the same original signal and highlighting different parts of it. And so you can uh, really improve your interpretation. I do a lot of exper I did a lot of experiments uh, with this approach and it works, it really works. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. I also had personally another question uh, yeah. because you mentioned there are more, hand, more than 100 attributes, uh, yeah. music attributes that can be used. So have you considered to combine this attribute with seismic attributes? We also have many seismic attributes for, for oil and yeah. gas exploration. So is there a way, some kind of magic, you know, to, to, to link between each seismic attribute and sound attribute? Have you tried something similar? Yes, good question. Yes, I did, because uh, of course there are many uh, useful seismic attributes, traditional seismic attributes that we cannot ignore. And uh, basically I, I, I have done that, creating a sort of very complex fingerprint, a sort of uh, fingerprint of the seismic data, combining MIDI, audio and seismic attributes at the same time, creating a very complex fingerprint of uh, the seismic uh, geophysical signal for improving the interpretation. Because all these machine, le machine learning and deep learning algorithms work uh, very easily on multi-attribute metrics. So you can also include, uh, if you like, 130 uh, different types of attributes. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, sometimes you need to do a sort of ranking uh, you cannot use all of them uh, without any discrimination. So what I do in general is to create a big matrix with many, many attributes, and then I perform a quantitative ranking uh, of uh, these attribute metrics, trying to understand what are the most useful attributes for distinguishing what I want to distinguish. So thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Paolo, for your answer. I will take another yeah. question. I think from Mohammed, the same person who asked before. Yeah. Uh, there are currently many studies using micro tremor exploration. Have you tried to hear any ambient noise recording before earthquakes occurring? Maybe this method can bring interesting insight for detecting foreshock before yeah. earthquakes occurring yes. in seismic active regions. So this is yeah more related to earthquake exploration. So have yes. you tried to, to hear for, for that? Yeah. Yes, I have, I have done that. And uh, uh, there is so many information in, the, in the, this type of signals. Uh, and at the moment, I don't have, of course, any magic rule for predicting earthquakes, of course. But uh, yes, uh, I, have this, I have done this type of analysis on um, earthquakes before the earthquakes, trying to see if there is some type of precursor but also i have done this type of analysis on volcanic tremor and for instance i have published some studies about uh, the uh, f famous uh, uh, saint Helens uh, volcanic eruption of uh, some decades ago and uh, it is extremely interesting to see what happens before the eruption in terms of the attributes there are so many precursors be before the eruption. So, of course, this technique can be applied to uh, the analysis of uh, earthquakes uh, and uh, volcanic uh, activity. Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Paolo. I will see if we have any other questions. I remind the audience that you can ask your questions or comments in the comment section, and we are going to pick them before uh, we close this call. Um, so the, the audience are just saying thank you very much for the inter very interesting uh, presentation. Thank you. I think I can't see other questions in the Q&A session. So yeah, I think if we don't have any other questions from the audience, uh, I will not hold Dr. Paolo longer. Uh, again, thank you. We are almost uh, one hour uh, from this from this webinar. So again, thank you very much, Dr. Paolo, for your very, very insightful presentation and for introducing this new method of seeing or hearing seismic data that can be used rather for oil and gas exploration or for seismic earthquake data uh, studies. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we are going to see much more publications in the near future uh, on using this new sonification method, especially with the development with the of the AI uh, machine learning, machine learning uh, classification yeah. and prediction algorithms. So with that said, I would like to thank all our audience for today. I remind you that we will have another webinar next month. So stay tuned in our INAS webpage, International Network of Algerian Scientists, and looking forward to see you uh, very soon in the next uh, next webinar, hopefully next month. Thank you, Dr. Paolo, again, for your very kind thank presentation. You, thank you, Mohammed. Thank you very much for organizing this webinar and thank you everybody for for attending this webinar and for for their very interesting questions thanks thank you thank you have a good day bye